Yo, what up, a-holes? Thank you for tuning into the Holistic A-Hole Podcast. My name is Eric Levi, and I'm the Holistic A-Hole, the mommy blogger with balls, the inconvenient truth of health. Thank you for tuning into today's episode, where today we're going to go deep on posture. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to jump into the old black hole of controversial posture talk. Just lighten the blogs on fire talking about posture. Tomorrow, the kids are going to go to school. They're going to be like, did you hear the holistic a-hole podcast yesterday? No, of course I didn't because my parents won't let me listen to it because it's so controversial. This week, he talked about posture. Oh, boy. The hate mail I'm going to get on Facebook. Oh, you straight white males talking about your posture. You and your privilege talking about posture. Jesus Christ, how did I get so far off the rails less than a minute into the podcast? Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about posture today, and, uh, and it's going to be wild because it's been on my mind, and quite frankly, I'm sick of having awful posture I really am, and uh, I want to try to convince you a-holes that uh, you too should be sick of having awful posture, but uh, before we do that, you know, uh, first off, I want to welcome any new listener and any returning listener. Basically, if you got ears and you're listening right now, thank you for listening, and uh, if you haven't yet done this, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, that way this bad boy pops up right there in your iTunes or Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or CastBox or whatever you listen to this on, it'll pop up right there in your feed. Spotify, we're there too. It'll pop up right in your feed every uh, time it's released, which is like twice a week now. And uh, and then hit me up on all the socials, the uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, all that sh- Nike. Uh, I'll be there under holistic a hole and, um, keep your eyes peeled because we're going to do, uh, uh, a little community building thing soon, uh, regarding Facebook. So, uh, if you are, uh, if you are not yet done this, uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Um, okay. So let's talk about posture. What am I talking about with posture? Why is it, why is it a big deal? Why am I thinking about it? Um, you know, posture is not a thing that I I usually consciously think about. Uh, you know, when it comes to posture, I'm extremely, extremely lazy in my life. I'd say I'm a bit of a go getter. I'm a bit of an, I try to be an overachiever. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but I try to be an overachiever. And, uh, where I, I fail, I mean, miserably is when it comes to my posture. Uh, for some reason, I can't stand up straight. My bones just don't stack on top of each other the right way. Um, I don't know what it is with my body. It just doesn't. It just doesn't work right for some reason in that regard. Uh, it doesn't matter. I could drink all the fucking kale smoothies I want. I could, you know, do every alternate nostril breath possible to bring myself into, um, you know, uh, into. Uh, I don't know, holistic joy. I could meditate for fucking hours. My back is still going to be fucked. And, uh, and you, you don't think about it right when you're young because it, it posture doesn't really play into your, into your day. Right. I mean, unless you have like nagging sports injuries, which, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of 20 somethings do because maybe you you played high school sports or college sports and, you know, just years of just wrecking your body and probably not sleeping right, not eating right. Uh, it all catches up to you in your thirties and that's where you start feeling all your misalignments just, oh, just like a fucking piercing alarm at five in the morning you know, that's what you just random, just knee pain. Like where'd that come from? You know, the right side of the lower part of my back, just somebody's just sticking a knife right there somewhere. So for some reason it just comes out of nowhere. You know, you, you blow the candles out on your 30th birthday and then all of a sudden you've got the gout. This is what happens when you start getting older and, uh, and, but the older I'm getting, the wiser I'm getting right. A holes. This is what happens. 
you know? I'm starting to be more in tune to my body. And I, 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 uh, I, would, I would give credit where credit's due. Mo- I'd say yoga, you know? Yoga has made me very body aware, you know? You have to have a certain, uh, what is it, body intelligence. This is, you have to think with your body, you know? And uh, my body intelligence has become much sharper since I've really started diving in deep to yoga. Um, specifically, I'd say the, uh, the, the Dharma Mitra yoga practice in good old New York City. Um, you know, the spiritual, the, the subconscious, the body, uh, you know, the, the infinite consciousness, the, uh, uh, you know, thinking with my, uh, with my intuition, my third eye, uh, you know, this all comes with your body intelligence. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've been, I've been getting tight with my body intelligence and trying to be more, uh, cognitive, I guess, try to be more aware of, of how I move through the world. I'm not a graceful fella at all. Uh, I'm like a stiff, you know, uh, like popsicle stick man, you know, my body moves as if you just put me together with, with like, you know, a couple really big popsicle sticks and, uh, like I can't bend. I'm not nimble. Uh, not, you know, although I'll say, man, like I'm pretty good dancer. Um, pretty, nah, actually, you know, I'm okay. Like I was a wedding DJ for a little while. So I got really good at like wedding dances, you know, like, uh, like I, I got a, like a, like a pretty gnarly, uh, electric slide, uh, cha-cha slide. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, you know, sick, nasty on that. Um, you know, the thing is I was also doing my own dances, uh, my own DJ line dances, like the, I can't dance dance, uh, you know, where you just do a lot of different moves like the sprinkler and this downhill skiing and the drive in the car. Those are dance moves in the, I can't dance dance. Uh, you know, lot, just a lot of, just a lot of great, um, a lot of great wedding dances that I've done, uh, over the years. But little did I know, being a wedding DJ for so many years just wrecked the shit out of my body, you know? Like, I feel like I played D-line in the NFL for five years. I, no, I was just uh, doing the electric slide at people's weddings. Not just doing the electric slide, by the way, leading the electric slide. Huge difference between the two. Granted, the beauty of the electric slide, and I truly believe this from the bottom of my... Um, of my heart. Uh, but the electric slide isn't just a dance led by like an experienced wedding DJ. The electric slide really is a dance of leadership. When you do the electric slide, you really are your own leader. You have to, you, you, you are allowing yourself to fall into the flow of all of the people around you doing the electric slide. And maybe you've never done the electric slide before. All of a sudden, you know it. You know the moves. You're watching me, the wedding DJ, do it. But at some point, at some point, you just you just kind of take control yourself, and you and you just kind of lose yourself in the dance. And I mean, that's leadership. That really is. That that is a. I mean, that's leadership on my on my end. Uh, but you, the dancer, it's like you take control of your own body. You know, your body intelligence really moves you through that progression of the electric slide. So uh, I always thought that was uh, that was an exciting thing to experience. But, um, you know, I like, uh, you know, my, bo- my body posture just over the years, uh, j- just not good just not good. It's like my knees are going one way. My hips are moving another. It's like my sciatica, my freaking lumbar, my goddamn, uh, collarbone. I don't know what, whatever the spine is made up of, man, like mine just isn't right. Uh, not to mention, man, I mean, just all the years of sitting, uh, when I was, when I was in college, um, I lived with a bunch of buddies in a house near campus uh, this is Arizona state, Arizona state university. And, um, we would, uh, where we lived, we would take this bus. I think it was called the flash, (laughs) the flash bus. Uh, the flash bus was just like a free bus in the city of Tempe that just like drives around the city. And you could just, you could just jump on the bus. 
You ain't got to pay nothing, man. You just jump on the bus and it takes you around. It's got a, it's got a nice little route and it takes you around, uh, not the whole city, but uh, it takes you around like uh, this little neighborhood of Tempe to, you know, different parts and then into the university campus and I would take it every day. And uh, I, I remember, man, just taking that bus and there would be, you know, the driver. <laughs> and uh, oh, man, I remember talking to the driver and he was like, oh man, never become a bus driver. And, you know, he was taking me to, to school. He was taking me to college. And uh, I was just kind of like, yeah, man, that's kind of why, uh, why I'm in this bus right now going to college because uh, I don't want to be a, a bus driver for the city. And uh, he, he was like, he's like, man, don't ever become a bus driver, man. It just wrecks your body. And I was like, how does it wreck your body? He's like, I don't know. I just sit all day and now my back's all fucked up. And man, that like blew my mind. That was probably one of the most important lessons I've learned in my, when I was a young man, when I was a young man, I was like, what, 20, 21, very impressionable. Here's this old man, this old wise man telling me never to become a bus driver because of the physical debilitating workload that you deal with day in, day out of just sitting in a chair. And, uh, but now I get it after years of just sitting, of just sitting and just being comfortable, my body, my, my skeletal frame just, it it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Uh, same thing with spending years of my life, years of my life sleeping in a bed, a comfortable mattress. I don't anymore, but at one time I had a pillow top. I had a pillow top for years, in fact. Who knew I was just crushing the skeletal integrity of my body by just being comfortable, just being on on a lovely, comfortable mattress that I look forward to falling into every single night. Who knew that I was putting my health at risk? So now I'm all fucked up. My body's all fucked up. Uh, you know, again, like the specifically what's going on the, that I'm focusing on is my pelvic floor. So, you know, that's a sexy way of describing a part of your body. Oh, my pelvic floor. So that's my pelvic floor is, uh, is below, I think my spine somewhere, uh, around the hip area, south of the hip area. Um, don't tell me, uh, posterior, posterior to my hips. Um, that's medical jargon right there. That is, uh, American medicine, uh, posterior, I don't know, posterior to my hips. And, uh, that's where my pelvic floor is. And that is what is just causing a a lot of problems for me right now. So basically what's going on is, uh, I don't know why, but my pelvic, uh, floor is all tilted to the back. Like I got this little, you know, like, I don't know, shenane thing going on, you know, where I'm like arching my back back. So my butt's popping out, you know, like I'm about to do some like, Ooh, girl, snap it up. What you saying? What you talking about? Deal at the gap. Ooh, I'm there. I got that kind of thing going on with my hip right now. And, um, you know, I never really noticed it, but, uh, but now I get it, you know, because it's like, I can't, what it is, it's because my hips are so tight over the years of just sitting on in comfortable chairs and sleeping on comfortable beds have made my hips a complete disaster. So it's like, now I got my butt popping out like a little, uh, you know, shenane thing. And then, uh, you know, my, my back, it, this is causing like problems in my lower back. Uh, not like debilitating, crippling problems, but just enough to where it's like my hips are too tight and you know, it starts to just kind of pinch some nerves here and there. I mean, over time, yeah, it's going to start, it's going to start causing problems. And what's really freaking me out, man, is, uh, when I, I walk around my neighborhood and I see, especially just like walking around New York, but definitely in my neighborhood, cause there's some older folks who live in my neighborhood. I see these old people with their, you know, old men, with their hunched over backs, like they are legit hunched over, you know, like they are, uh, like face to the ground, uh, back 
parallel to the floor. You know what I mean? Like par- like their their head is going down to sea level. Their head is going posterior to the sky. Uh, that's frightening, dude. That is not a good situation. So, you know, I worry about my back doing that, but then I got the other thing going on where my hips are going forward and my back is going back. Uh, I might be doing like Neo in the matrix, uh, soon, just like looking straight up at the sky. So it's either one, you know, I don't want that. I just want my, my, I want to be holisticus erectus. I want to be straight up. Okay. Like you're supposed to, you're supposed to be like head, neck, spinal column to the butt all should be like one line. You shouldn't have all of this craziness. So, you know, I'm like really focusing on my posture. And, uh, I had someone tell me, uh, recently they're like, well, you know how you fix this is you, you, uh, you sleep on the ground, uh, with a yoga block as a pillow and you just do that. And, um, you know, uh, I'm not going to lie. Like I am actually considering it. Um, it's going to take, it's going to take, uh, it's going to take a pretty big commitment for me to, uh, to really do that, to really follow through and just sleep on the ground. You know, that's like not a thing that I genuinely, um, like want to do like, like to me, like part of the beauty of like sleeping in a bed is the part where like I walk up to the bed and I see the bed and I like, I don't even think, you know, I just like fall into the bed and you know, there's that instinctual part of me that's just been doing this for a long time. And I'm just going to go, well, this is the bed I'm going to sleep in. And then I'm going to close my eyes. And then like, I don't know how this happens, but I'll just fall asleep you know, like I'll just fall asleep. And, uh, and I, and and I kind of like that about, um, about the whole sleeping thing, you know? Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to have that. Like if I, if at the end of the day, when I'm just sleepy, I'm going to look at a fucking yoga mat or something on the ground and I'm going to go, Oh God. Oh no. Oh God, I gotta, what a, oh, it hurts. Oh, I'm on the floor. Ugh, ugh, look at all the dust. It's like dusty down here. What, what is that? A, is that a, a, is that a corn chip? Where the hell that corn chip? Co- There's a couple corn chips here. Oh yeah. I had corn chips a couple months ago because I got too high and I was vegan and corn chips are vegan. So I ate that shit, but now Ugh, there's a roach and oh look, there's that hat that I couldn't find. All right, well I guess I'm just gonna fall asleep now as I as I inhale dust balls that are rolling around the bottom of uh, of my floor. Oh, this this is gonna feel just refreshing to wake up and you know m- not maybe hopefully don't have a roach on my face because I live in New York and there's just roaches walking around the floors all the time. I'll try not to wake myself up by screaming. Uh, that's what you have to look forward to when you sleep, um, on the floor. So I just don't know. I just don't know if that's a thing I'm going to be able to pull off. Uh, you know, the other stuff I'm doing though, uh, to try to, um, to try to, to try to ease into this new way of, uh, structuring my posture is, uh, I'm doing these, these little like movements. Like I, like I've been doing a lot of squats. Uh, well, I've been doing squats with the weights, but I'll just do like yoga squats where I'll just like, you know, like squat down in position. Cause that's, you know, if you could do that, that's, uh, that, that, that's natural human, um, posturing, but it's hard to do when your hips are like super tight. Plus dude, here's the thing. Here's the thing about, about this whole posture stuff. That's really important to me. Uh, you know, the hips hold a lot of emotions. Um, the hips hold a lot of emotion. And I feel this when I do yoga, if I do like a good, like hip opening exercise and, uh, and then my hips feel open and then I'll just, feel just like this wave of like calm. So a few times I've felt like a little like emotional, you know, like, uh, like I've, I've kind of felt like that little pitter patter of my heart. Like, Oh, like I might feel like a little bit of just, I don't know, emotion, you know, like that fluffy woman stuff they talk about, you know, like when they're talking to you and you're, you're trying to listen, but you're probably not dudes, 
you know, that, that, that emotion, I was like, Oh, the hips are hoping. And, uh, man, I wonder what's going on on days of our lives. So do, if that's, I think women still watch that. I watched that when I was a kid, I was raised on days of our lives, Roman Brady bitch. So, uh, Victor Curiacus motherfucker. Yeah. You know, what's crazy is i Victor Kyriakis was still on uh, Days of Our Lives. I feel like a couple years ago, that dude has been 74 years old since the 80s. I don't, he must be at least 100 now on that show, but still, it's just a great gray mane of hair and a, a puffy gray mustache. Uh, so, yeah, no, but the uh, emotions, yeah. Oh, and when you're standing straight, when you're standing straight up, straight upright, you know, you got a nice open chest, you're looking over the horizon, uh, you feel better as a person, your mood increases when you open up and find space within you, you know, when you open up and you keep your head up, when your head's down, when you're, the problem is a lot of people's depression isn't a chemical imbalance, it's not hereditary, it's not sadness, it's just because your posture's all is all jacked. You know, a lot of people, they scrunch their shoulders, they slouch. There's no sure, no more of a sure nonverbal sign that, uh, that you're sad or that things aren't going well for you. than when you slouch, uh, nobody who just won the lottery slouches, nobody who just got a promotion at their job slouches, nobody who just made out with the girl that you took out finally after, you know, being in the friend zone for years slouches when they get that kiss. Okay. When you slouch, you're putting out negative nonverbal cues, not to mention you're probably doing it because you're, 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 you're doing posture over emotion, do emotion or posture, uh, posture lead to emotion. So open yourself up, just fake it till you make it, baby. Even if you're miserable, just open yourself up, open your posture up and believe it or not, you will naturally just feel better. You know, you'll feel better. Uh, the biochemical purpose I think might be tied to the serotonin might be, uh, tied to the vagus nerve breathing into your gut. Uh, and, uh, yeah, has, has a lot to do with that too. But, uh, but yeah, the posture plays into your mood. You feel better. You feel like a champion. And, uh, and that's what this is all about, right? That's why we, uh, that's why we're holistic a-holes because we want to feel like champions. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, I, I wonder if you've been working on your posture. How do you feel about posture? How do you feel about the way you feel when you focus on posture? Do you have a weird pelvic floor tilt? Have you slept on the floor? Let me know. Hit me up on them socials. Uh, and if you haven't done it, remember to subscribe And also, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you go on iTunes, leave a five-star review, because that's just the right thing to do. So thank you again for listening. If you're new to the podcast, make sure you go back and catch up on old episodes, take yourself through a little holistic a-hole binge, and we will catch back up on the next episode. Thank you guys for listening. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.